even though Parkinson's disease is a motor disorder with the key features being tremor and rigidity and slowness, a lot of patients are nonetheless quite concerned about the possibility that it'll affect their memory and thinking. Uh, cognitive problems in Parkinson's disease uh, are really uncommon in the newly diagnosed patient, but sometimes can be a problem as the disease progresses, and it is reasonable to be concerned about them, although uh, the concern, there shouldn't really be a concern uh, in the newly diagnosed patient, as I was saying before, because these symptoms are really fairly unusual in the, recent, in the early stages of Parkinson's disease. So when they do occur, the symptoms of cognitive problems in Parkinson's really are quite different than those that you've seen in an Alzheimer's patient. People with Parkinson's disease uh, have trouble with multitasking. They have trouble paying attention to things. Uh, they have trouble in groups, uh, uh, participating rapidly in conversations uh, when there's more than a couple people uh, present at the table. Um, and they have trouble with planning and organization. Very rarely do they have the severe problems with memory that people with Alzheimer's have. And people with Parkinson's and cognitive problems rarely forget who they are, forget who their loved ones are. And this very disturbing loss of self that occurs with Alzheimer's disease is relatively unusual uh, in the cognitive problems that occur with Parkinson's disease. So the two are really fairly distinct. Um, as I was saying before, cognitive problems are not common in early Parkinson's, but can be a problem as the disease progresses. And there are things that people can do uh, to uh, try to work around, strategies to try to work around how the cognitive problems in Parkinson's disease might affect their daily lives. So because people have trouble with multitasking, uh, it's a good idea to try to do one thing at a time. So if you're, for example, paying your bills, it's a good idea not to have the TV or the radio playing at the same time. Uh, people also have trouble keeping up with conversations when there's more than a few people. So if you're planning a social outing, it's a good idea to do it maybe a relatively quieter place and have one or two couples, maybe six people uh, at the event rather than a big room of people because a big room of people can be very hard for a patient with Parkinson's disease to navigate cognitively because of the distractions, not to mention motorically because of the crowds. So these are some simple things that you can do. In, order, in, in terms of the problems with planning and organization, it's a great idea to keep lists and to have strategies for doing multi-step tasks, like write down a strategy before you start, make sure you leave plenty of time. If you find yourself getting distracted, take a break and then go back to it. There are a lot of different things that you can do that don't involve medications that can work around the problems that people uh, with Parkinson's sometimes have with these kinds of cognitive tasks. Uh, finally, if you feel yourself experiencing these things, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor about them because they might be able to help you implement these strategies. There may also be medication adjustments which would help you not only motorically but also in terms of your cognitive function. Cognitive problems uh, affect about 10 to 15 percent of a cross-section of Parkinson's patients. However, if you uh, take an individual with Parkinson's disease and follow them over a long period of time, uh, say up to 20 or 30 years, actually a majority of patients will develop some cognitive problems over that long period of time. Often it occurs late in life. In fact, that's the rule that it would be something that would occur uh, late in life around the time that uh, anyone might be developing cognitive problems. It's a little more likely in Parkinson's patients. Actually, they're several times more likely to develop cognitive problems than somebody that doesn't have Parkinson's disease. Nonetheless, among a newly diagnosed patient, the risk of cognitive problems is really quite low. And this really only occurs in older patients. Uh, in addition, taking up on that same theme, newly di uh, young onset patients, say Parkinson's patients who are diagnosed in their 30s and 40s, uh, rarely develop cognitive problems until they get to be quite a bit older. On the other hand, older patients when they develop Parkinson's disease, say at the age of 70 or 75, uh, are more likely to develop cognitive problems just the way somebody um, that age in general would be more likely to develop cognitive problems. Um, so um, I usually tell my patients that young onset patients, especially, uh, and newly diagnosed patients, really have little to worry from, little to worry in terms of cognitive problems. Older patients and patients who've had Parkinson's disease for a longer period of time are at more risk, and you have to look carefully uh, and ask questions uh, about whether cognitive problems might be beginning to be a problem uh, and consider uh, um, management strategies for those people that uh, might be beginning to have cognitive problems.